ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله فان ازك حديث الكتاب الله وخير هذا هذا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشوف امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته We thank Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala our creator the one who has blessed us the one who has brought us into existence not because he owe us any obligation but out of his infinite mercies we thank him we praise him and we pray may he continue to strengthen us sustain us and make our feet our feet very very firm on the path of islam the path to paradise um that we are here today doesn't mean that we are so good we have the best of um piety or we have the best of taqwa uh it's just for the mercy allah has bestowed upon us that we are here we pray may his one who water allah continue to shower his mercies upon us and we pray may he give us long life on the right of on the path of righteousness and on the path of good inshallah we are honored today um to host this august gathering yes i repeat let me emphasize august gathering because as muslims everywhere we've gathered to share discuss or to ruminate over the teachings of islam and anything that will make our faith very strong or much much stronger that, than it used to be here to then it's an august gathering we are honored we are privileged again it's not a right we are honored um to have this august event inshallah we have a very important person somebody who is renowned somebody who is known both locally and internationally for that field that area he has decided to devote his time to and undoubtedly he has been doing it very well and will continue to do it inshallah we are very very honored we are privileged once again to have him here um without much ado i recognize those of us who are here um our august visitor whom i think preponderantly most of us know his name um let me also recognize the presence of our um imam our vice admin or amir gemu one as a muslim umma um, we thank you for being here we thank you for always guiding us we also thank our malam from um, navy mosque we say welcome we thank you and you are a host but at the same time we need to honor you we also say thank you for those who have put this into place inshallah may allah might allah continue to reward you um without wasting much time like i said earlier on we'll move to what is much much important which is the opportunity for us to listen and learn the opportunity for us to ask questions and the opportunity for us to deepen our knowledge of our religion which most importantly we all know the essence of knowledge in our religion which is the only path to paradise unarguably inshallah i would call on malam usman abubakar um for birni kebi to give us a preamble then before we get to the nitty gritty so please listen and listen very well inshallah as time goes on you will be entitled to ask questions um so i will call on malak usman abubakar to give us a preamble lecture then we take it up from here اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه وما توفيق الا بالله عليه توكلت اليه منيب وبعد I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil inclination 
tendencies and machination of shaitan they rejected the accords in the name of allah the most compassionate the most merciful the master of the day of accountability may his peace blessings glorification benediction and salutation be upon our noble prophet the last of the spiritual messengers and teachers from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has been prophesied in various portions of the scriptures that preceded the glorious quran vis-a-vis -vis the christian bible by moses and jesus and many other prophets of israel the like of which we have the book of genesis in chapter 49 verse 1 the book of Genesis in chapter 49 verse 10 the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 33 verses 1 to 3 the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 18 verse 15 the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 18 verses 18 to 22 the book of Isaiah in chapter 13 verse 17 the book of Isaiah in chapter 21 verse 7, the book of Isaiah in chapter 28 verses 9 to 11, the book of Isaiah in chapter 29 verse 12, the book of Isaiah in chapter 42 verses 1 to 13, the book of Isaiah in chapter 60 verses 1 to 7, the book of Habakkuk in chapter 3 verse 1 to 3, the book of Matthew in chapter 11 verse 11 the book of Matthew in chapter 23 verses 37 to 39. The book of John in chapter 1 verses 19 to 25. The book of John in chapter 14 verse 16 in chapter 14 verse 26 in chapter 14 verse 15. The book of John in chapter 16 verses 7 to 9. The book of John in chapter 16 verses 12 to 14. And the book of Revelation in chapter 14 verses 6 to 7 in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, his companions and all those that have accepted the guidance until the day of final recompense brothers and sisters in Islam our Christian brethren here present I greet you all with a divine Islamic formula of greetings which is also enshrined and stipulated within the context of the Holy Bible, like the book of Genesis in chapter 43, verse 23, like the book of Numbers in chapter 6, verse 26, like the book, the book of Judge in chapter 23, verse 6, like the book of 1 Samuel in chapter 1, verse 17, like the book of 1 Samuel in chapter 20, uh, 25, verse 6, like the book of Luke in chapter 10, verses 5 to 6, like the book of Luke in chapter 24 verse 32 to 36 and the book of John in chapter 20 verse 19, chapter 20 verse 21 and chapter 20 verse 26 which is also confirmed in the glorious Quran in chapter 6 verse 54 as well as in chapter 24 verse 27 which is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Meaning, may the peace and blessings of Almighty God be upon all of you. We give thanks to Almighty Allah for sparing our life to this moment and for giving us the opportunity to attend this important congregation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy be our guardian throughout our deliberation. My own is a preamble. Sheikh is going to deliver the lecture. I just decided to take heart to make a little presentation before my shake. You know, naturally, if a mother sees her child who is yet to start crawling, and she realizes the child is crawling about to stand up, the mother will get happy and she will provide all necessary things to facilitate the crawling of the child. That is the major reason why I will, you know, try talking before Sheikh. Perhaps when Sheikh realizes I've started crawling, he will assist me to get to where I should get, inshallah. Therefore, I don't have a topic, but rather I just want to uh, strengthen our Iman 
which regards to our religion and give us the encouragement to feel superior and not inferior, to have confidence in our own religion and to be able to present our religion before anyone, anywhere, at any time. You being a Muslim is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Islam is the only chosen religion of Almighty Allah. And we found ourselves in a society today that whatever you feel like worshipping, nobody stops you from worshipping. Mankind has been in search for their God. Many in search of God, they worship their fellow human beings. So therefore you have many religions in circulation. You see Hinduism, you know, that originated from a river Rhine right area known as River Hindus. Like Buddhism from a man called Buddha. Like Taoism from a man called Tao. Like Confucianism from Confucius. Like Judaism from a tribe called Tribe of Judea. A religion that has a divine origin. Islam is the only religion with a divine origin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the glorious Quran in chapter 3 verse 19 Allah says in the dina and Allah and Islam that truly most assuredly certainly the only true and accepted religion in the sight of Almighty God is Islam and in chapter 3 verse 85 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ يَبْتَجِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا Anyone that upholds any other religion besides Islam, Allah says, Allah is not going to accept that religion from him. Then Allah says, in the day of Qiyamah, in the day of Qiyamah, such a person that upholds a religion other than Islam is going to find himself among the losers. Woman yet regal Islam in the year after he shall be among the losers. In this verse of the Quran Almighty, Allah confirmed that Islam is the only accepted religion in the sight of Almighty God. In chapter 5, verse 3 of the glorious Quran, Allah says, That today I have completed your religion unto you, and that I have perfected my favor upon you. And Allah says, I have chosen for you Islam as a way of life. I have chosen for you Islam as a religion. Islam Allah mentioned Islam as a religion clearly chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the inhabitants of this earth to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through or under the umbrella of Islam. Moreover, in chapter 6, verse 125 of the glorious Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woman yuridillahu an yahadiyahu yesharaha sadrahu lil Islam. Woman Yurid Ayyidullahu Yet Allah Sadrahu Dayik and Harajan Ka and Nama Yasa Abu Sama. Allah says, Whosoever Allah wish to guide, Allah will open his chance. Allah will open the breast of such a person to the understanding of Islam. And whosoever Allah wish to mislead, Allah says, Yet Allah Sadrahu Dayik and Allah will make his chest to be closed. Harajan to be constricted Ka and Nama Yasa Abu Sama as if such a person is climbing to the skies. My brothers and sisters in Islam and our Christian brethren here are present in many portions of the glorious Quran, Allah addressed Islam as a religion from Almighty God, as a religion of Almighty God. It's enough for you to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being a Muslim. It's not your choice, it's out of Allah's wish that you find yourself in this favor of being a Muslim. Our Christian brethren may wonder how comes in the glorious Quran Allah mentioned Islam as the only religion of God. When you look at the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, the name Christianity is nowhere to be found. Nowhere. Where Allah says Christianity is a religion from Almighty God, nowhere. The way Allah says, in the dina, in the law, al Islam, only religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. There is no Christianity mentioned in the whole of the Bible. The word Christianity is nowhere to be found. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for choosing the name 
Islam for the Muslims and even the name Muslim for the Muslims. In chapter 22, verse 78 of the glorious Quran, Allah mentioned that Muslims is also the name that He leveled the followers of the Islam. In chapter 22, verse 78 of the glorious Quran, Allah says, Who was Samakumul Muslim He, Allah, named you Muslims. So your name, your religion is given to you by Almighty Allah. It's enough for you to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the preamble. As I mentioned, many other religions that are in circulation are religions that derive their origin from an individual, a tribe, or even some from other objects. And I said Christianity from Christ. Although that is what they claim actually. But in Islam, my brothers and sisters, we should understand that Jesus is our own. We believe in Jesus. We respect him. We honor him. We know Jesus Christ much more than the Christians do. We know him more than the Christians do. Detailed explanation of who Jesus is, is found in the glorious Quran. His life, his mission, his miracles, his um, physical departure, all have been detailed described in the glorious Quran, which you cannot find in the Christian Bible at all. So we know him more than the Christians do. In Islam, out of honor and respect to Jesus Christ, the whole chapter is named after the mother of Jesus called chapter Maryam. Chapter 19 of the glorious Quran is named after Mary. There is no book of the Bible that is named after Mary. Not only a book being named after the mother of Jesus in the Bible. Mm -mm. The birth, the conception, delivery, and supernatural miracles that happened to Mary before the birth of Jesus is not recorded in the Bible. How was Mary conceived? How was she born? How was she delivered? This information is nowhere in the Bible. We have detailed information about the conception and delivery of Mary and even the supernatural event that happened to Mary when she was under the care of Zechariah, secluded in the temple of Zechariah, is nowhere to be found in the Bible. So the glorious Quran, Mary is mentioned by name in not less than 32 different places in the Holy Quran by name Mary as the mother of Jesus out of respect and honor that Islam has for Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Out of respect and honor that the Muslims have for Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the name of Jesus Christ is repeated in the glorious Quran 500% more times than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad is mentioned by name as Muhammad in the glorious Quran in chapter 3 verse 144 as Muhammad. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ كَنَا كَنَاكْ مِنْ قَبْلَ يَرُسُلٌ Allah mentioned Muhammad by name here. The second place is in chapter 33 verse 40 of the glorious Quran. Allah says مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِرْجَالِكُمْ Muhammad is mentioned by name here. The third place is in chapter 47 verse 2. Allah says وَآمِنُوا بِمَا نُزِّلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ Muhammad is mentioned by name. The fourth place in, in chapter 48 verse 29 of the glorious Quran, Allah says, Muhammad Rasulullah. And then the fifth place, which is the last place in the glorious Quran that is called by, is mentioned by a qualifier, Ahmad. In chapter 61, verse 6 of the glorious Quran, these are these five places in the glorious Quran where Muhammad is mentioned by name. But remember, the whole conversation, the whole message of the glorious Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to Muhammad to relate to mankind. Talking to Muhammad to relate to mankind. So every verse of the glorious Quran is talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But by name Muhammad, he is mentioned only in five places where Jesus is mentioned by name Isa in 25 different places in the glorious Quran. He is mentioned by name in the glorious Quran in chapter 2 in verse 136. He is mentioned by name 
in chapter 2, in verse 253. He is mentioned by name in chapter 2, in verse 271. He is mentioned by name in chapter 3, in verse 45. Chapter 3, verse 52. Chapter 3, verse 55. Chapter 3, verse 59. Chapter 3, verse 84. He is mentioned in chapter 4, verse 157. He is mentioned in chapter 4, verse 163. He is mentioned in chapter 4, verse 171. He is mentioned in chapter 5, verse 46. He is mentioned in chapter 5, verse 78. He is mentioned in chapter 5, verse 110, 112, 140. 116. He is mentioned in chapter 6, verse 85. He is mentioned in chapter 19, verse 34. He is mentioned in chapter 33, verse 7. He is mentioned in chapter 42, verse 13. He is mentioned in chapter 43, verse 69. He is mentioned in chapter 57, verse 27. He is mentioned in chapter 61, verse 6 and verse 14. These are the 25 different places in the glorious Quran where Jesus is mentioned by them 500 percent more than the Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The miracles of Jesus are also detailed explained in the glorious Quran, which are nowhere to be found in the Christian Bible. According to the Bible, the first miracle that Jesus ever did in his lifetime was to change water into wine. And he did that when he was 30 years old. It's in the book of John in chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. But about in the glorious Quran says that the first miracle that Jesus displayed in his lifetime was to speak on the very day he was delivered. And this is nowhere to be found in the Bible. This is nowhere to be found in the Bible. Jesus Christ spoke out while he was in his mother's cradle in order to defend his mother from the you know, humiliations of her own people. Almighty Allah told us in the glorious Quran, <clears throat> in chapter 4, in verse 156, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَوْلِ هِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمَ بُهُتَانًا عَظِيمًا And on their sayings against Mary, a concocted lie, they said she committed, I mean, she is a fornicator. I mean, fornicators, that she fornicated to give back to Jesus Christ to upon him. وَقَوْلِ هِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمَ بُهُتَانًا عَظِيمًا Allah exonerated Mary from the claims of Jews that said that she fornicated to give back to Jesus Christ. You understand? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us it's a concocted lie. Allah exonerated her and her own son. So, before the birth of Jesus, Mary was in a great shock. She was in a great tribulation, having conceived, and nobody knows how to be having a, I mean, a husband. And now she is with a child, she's going to give birth to a child, she was thinking of how is she going to face her people with this kind of a shameful thing. They know her to be, you know, a, a pious woman, a virtuous woman of God, a righteous woman. Now she is conceived, she is approaching her people with a child without a husband. She was thinking of how to withstand her people. And that was when Jesus Christ was given the power by Almighty Allah to spoke in order to defend her, his own mother. You have a child without a husband. That was a question Mary could not answer. Your father was not a wicked man. He was not an adult adulterer. Nor was your mother a harlot. She wasn't a prostitute. She was a virtuous woman. Then how do you have a child without a husband? The only option that Mary was left with was to point to the child. Then Allah says, for Asharat Ilayhi, she pointed to the child, saying, Ask him, let him tell you how he came about. I don't know. Allah. In a shock. No. The people were shocked. They said, Mary, do you know what you are saying? How do you expect us to sleep with a child in the cradle? Do you know what you are saying? Then Allah gave the child the power to respond to the people in order to defend his mother. Kala, he said, Inni Abdullah, indeed I am a servant of Almighty God. That was the first statement he made. He was in the mother's cradle. This particular miracle of Jesus is nowhere to be found in the Bible. 
Kala Indi Abdullah, he said, Indeed, I'm a servant of Almighty Allah, and the Bible confirmed that Jesus was a servant of Almighty God. For those of you that were at the debate yesterday, the head man has caught him the places in the Bible. Yes, the Bible says, Yes, Jesus was a messenger of Almighty God in not less than 39 different places in the Bible, like the book of Matthew in chapter 10, verse 40, like the book of Mark in chapter 9, verse 18, like the book of Mark in chapter 9, verse 42, like the book of Luke in chapter 10, verse 16, like the book of John in chapter 4, verse 34, like the book of John in chapter 5, verse 30, in chapter 5, verse 36, in chapter 5, verse 37, in chapter 6, verse 38, in chapter 6, verse 39, in chapter Chapter 6 verse 40, in chapter 7 verse 18, in chapter 7 verse 26, in chapter 7 verse 29, in chapter 7 verse 32, the book of John, in chapter 8 verse 18, the book of John, in chapter 8 verse 26, the book of John, in chapter 8 verse 29, the book of John, in chapter 8 verse 42, the book of John, in chapter 9 verse 42, the book of John, in chapter 15 verses 21 to 24, the book of John, in chapter 17 verse 21, chapter 17 verse 23, chapter 17 verse 25, the book of John in chapter 12 verse 49, in chapter 12 verse 54, in the book of John in chapter 11 verse 32, all these books of the Bible confirm that Jesus was sent by Almighty God as such he was a messenger to Almighty God. And God has made me to be a prophet. I was appointed as a prophet of God, not God, not the Son of God. I am trying to tell you that Jesus Christ spoke on the very day he was delivered. And this was the message, message he was passing. He said, I'm a messenger of God, a servant of God, and a prophet of God. The Bible confirmed that Jesus was a prophet of Almighty God as any other prophet. If you could remember the glorious Quran told us, Who is Jesus Christ? In chapter 5, verse 75. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, Malimasihu bi Maryam illa rasulun, kada khalaq bi kawlihi rusul. Jesus, the son of Mary, is not more than a messenger of God, and many were messengers like him that came and passed away. Many like him came. Therefore, from Adam to Enoch to Noah to Abraham to Ishmael to Isaac to Jacob to Job to John to Jonah to Joel to Jeremiah to Joshua to Elijah to Elijah to Ezekiel to David to Solomon to Moses to Aaron to Jesus, all were messengers like him that came and passed away. Therefore, Allah appointed him also as a prophet of God. The Bible confirms that Jesus was a prophet of Almighty God in the book of Matthew, in chapter 21, verse 46. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. In the book of Mark, in chapter 6, verse 4. In the book of Luke, in chapter 4, verse 19. In the book of Luke, in chapter 7, verse 16. In the book of Luke, in chapter 13, verse 33. In the book of Luke, in chapter 4, verse 29. In the book of John, in chapter 4, verse 19. In the book of John, in chapter 7, verse 40. In the book of John, in chapter 6, verse 14. In the book of John, in chapter 9, verse 17. All these portions of the Bible confirm that Jesus was a prophet of Almighty God. Anyway, that was the first miracle that is recorded in the glorious Quran, which is nowhere to be found in the, in the Holy Bible. So with this, we have additional information about Jesus, which is not in the Bible, so we know much more about Jesus than the Christians do. Again in chapter 3, in verse 49 of the glorious Quran, Allah says, wa rasoola ila bani Israel, and a messenger unto the children of Israel, and Indeed, I have presented to you a sign from your Lord. I make use of a clay to make the frame, the figure of a bird. I bring him to it. And it becomes a bird with the permission of Allah. The Quran told us, Jesus make use of a clay. He used a clay to make the figure of a bird. He will breathe into it and the clay will fly as a bird. This is nowhere to be found in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Look at the record. Allah says, Jesus tells you of what you have eaten and what you hide at home in your store. You come to him, he will tell you, you have eaten pounded yam and a goosey soup. And in your store you have a bar and a soup. So that is what Jesus tells you. 
It's a miracle that is nowhere to be found in the Bible. Even the miracle of Mary herself, Allah says, Anytime Prophet Zechariah went to visit Mary in the temple where she was secluded, within the end of her risk, he found enrichment. Allah is sending food to her directly. Food directly. He could not withheld his own shock and amazement. He asked her a question, Mary, Anna like Haza, where do you get this food from? Khaled bin Indillah. She said it's from Allah. This food is from Allah, and that was what moved Zachariah to pray for Allah to give him a righteous, a virtuous child like Mary, and that was the result of John the Baptist. That was what resulted to the birth of John the Baptist. Kunalika the other Rabba, and that was when Zachariah started praying to Allah to give a righteous child, and he was given John the Baptist. So this miracles of Jesus in the glorious Quran are nowhere to be found in the Bible. Therefore, we love Jesus, we respect him, we honor him, we believe he gave life to death with the permission of Almighty Allah. He killed, he healed those that were born blind and lepers with the permission of Allah. He raised the dead with the permission of Almighty Allah. All the miracles that Jesus did, we believe in them, he did with the permission of Almighty God. All we are saying, believe in Jesus in his true personality and nature. As you see us, presenting lectures, discussing with Christians of highest eminence, Christians of higher integrity, you know, uh, doctors of divinity, trying to ascertain, trying to make it vivid, to make it clear for the followers of the religion of Islam and Christianity as where the greatest truth is. We are not doing it because of enmity and hatred against Jesus. We love him, we honor him, we respect him more than you do in Jesus is our own. We own Jesus, not you. If you have an issue regarding what I said, you are free to fix your time. No matter, I'm hiding behind my love. Fix your time, let us discuss who are the true followers of Jesus. Are they the Muslims or the Christians? I will not take much time because it's not my area. It's a Malan that's supposed to preach. All I am doing here is to create confidence in the mind of Muslims. We have the best. We have the best to offer. So why are we hiding? Why are we feeling inferior? Why don't we come out to sell what we have? You have what you can offer. You can beat your chest that your Quran is from Allah. Because Allah gives you a parameter to test whether a scripture is from you or not. And the parameter given to you by Allah is in chapter 4, verse 82 of the glorious Quran. Allah says, Afalai the Dabbarun al Quran. Do they not ponder and think about the glorious Quran? Allah says, I did think this Quran is not from Almighty Allah. There will have been a lot of discrepancies in the glorious Quran. That is to tell you, any version, any book, any book, any book that, that claims divinity, the parameter you use to weigh out whether it is divine or not is the presence or absence of contra I mean, contradictions, interpolations, historical fallacy, linguistic errors, pornographies. If I have to open it, if I have to open up, I will allow Sheikh to open up. To show you that, one, the scripture that Almighty God is talking about here, that is his own scripture is the glorious Quran. The parameter given to you shows you that there is no single contradiction within the context of the glorious Quran where you have countless number of contradictions in the Bible. One thing you can use to ascertain. How many versions of the Quran do you know? How many versions of the Quran do you know? One. Uh -uh. How many versions? One. Somebody sent three. How many versions of the Quran do you know? One. I mean versions. Where is Yusuf Ali? <laughs> eh? Or oh, a translation? Is not a version? <laughs> so the, the glorious Quran you see here in Nigeria. If you like, move to Ghana, it's the same Quran. Move to Morocco, the same. Leave Africa, go to Asia, the same Quran. 
Let me tell go to you of the same Quran. Anywhere you go in the world, that Quran is one and the same. But the different versions of the Bible in circulation, New English Bible, New International Version of the Bible, New American Standard Bible, New American Translation of the Holy Bible, New World Translation of the Holy Spirit by Joe Bartness only, New Jerusalem Bible, Amplified Bible, Living Bible, Good News Bible, Bad News Bible, are over 24,000 manuscripts of the Bible. There are more than 24,000 different manuscripts of the Bible. No two are identical. No two. It's a challenge anyway. There are more than 24,000 different manuscripts of the Bible. No two are the same. No two are identical. No two are similar. How many versions of the Quran do you know? Bring them here. You understand? That is enough to show you that this is the, the right path. Anyway, this is not my field anyway. It's more than that's supposed to deliver lecture. I have to hand over. I've seen the MC is already standing by me. I hope and pray that Allah, may Allah bless the gathering we are having today and the subsequent gatherings to come. May Allah guide Malam on what is going to present to us. May Allah forgive us our mistakes and shortcomings in our presentation. Where we deliver right, may Allah give us the reward of it. And may Allah strengthen us in our faith and give us the courage to invite God as the religion of Islam. Wassalamu alaikum wa Good. May Allah forgive you and us all here our shortcomings wherever we have made mistakes. Um, particularly, personally, I salute your oratory prowess. You speak very well. Yeah, um, because one thing is um, when you do public speaking, um, it's one thing to be endowed with the knowledge. It's another thing to be able to impact. And one of the beautiful ways you are able to impact meaningfully, again I repeat for the obscene time, is how you are able to articulate your point and talk and talk so that people will be able to assimilate and understand very well the message you are trying to pass across. Once again, Malam Usman Abu Bakr, Jazakumullah Khairan, may Allah reward you good. And ultimately, may Allah make paradise your final abu. Each and every one of us, that is my sincere and fervent prayer for each and every one of us, inshallah. And now gradually we are moving to the crescendo. The crescendo I mean here, um, the main Malam, though he has impacted, so Malam also wants to impact. So we are privileged, we are honored, and I particularly am honored to call upon Sheikh Hussein Yusuf Mabera to talk to us this afternoon. And please don't lose the essence of this session, propagation on a comparative religion, religious education. Northern Zone, and uh, he studied in Sudan. We welcome him. Ashaykh, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. Please impact us and strengthen our faith in Islam as Allah will make easy for you. Once again, I say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. You have the mic, sir. <laughs> من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعيده ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدد له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سبيلا يصليه لكم أعمالكم ويكفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يسيء الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا 
Amma ba'du fa inna azzaka la hadith kitabun la wa khayru la hadith hadith Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharu la umuru muhrasatuha wa kullu muhrasatin bida'a wa kullu bida'a tin dalala wa kullu dalala tin khanna wa rabbi sharaha li sadri wa yassar li amri wa halu la ukadata min lisani yafkahu kawli I seek the protection and guidance of Allah against the insinuation and evil suggestion or incitement of Satan, the rejected. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praises, worship, total submission, and obedience belong to Allah, the Lord, the sustainer, the wonderful designer and controller of the universe. I bear witness that there is no any other deity that deserves to be served and worshipped other than the Almighty Allah. And I bear witness that the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final and universal prophet and messenger that was sent after the departure of Jesus, the son of Mary, from this world. May the peace and the blessings of Allah continue to shine and reign upon our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his blessed family and companions till the day of judgment. The chairman of this august occasion, the chief imam of the central mosque here in Yakubu Gawan estate, also the chief imam of the central mosque, a port authority, Wari Delta State, the executive director of Imam Musa Multimedia Foundation, my respected co speaker, a scientist, a person of Marlon Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Nintendi, our media men, our respected master of ceremony, the MC, our religious clergy from both the Muslim and the Christian side, brothers and sisters in Islam, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. A golden opportunity in the presence of my Muslim brothers and sisters in order to propagate our religion. That is the first and final religion of Allah, the religion of salvation, the religion of immortality, the religion of eternal life, the religion of all the angels of Allah, the religion of all the prophets of Allah, the religion of the companions of paradise, that is the religion of Islam. Alhamdulillah, we thank the Almighty Allah and we must always continue to glorify and praise the Almighty Allah because of the monumental expansion of the religion of Islam all over the world, in spite of the fact that the enemies of Islam are conspiring day in and day out in order to extinguish the life of the religion of Islam through their various propaganda, economic empowerment, military power, and so many other technological know-how. Yet the religion of Islam is always expanded, even in the ocean of Christianity. The Christian dominated areas in Europe, in Asian countries, and so many other places, 
you see people trooping into the religion of Islam through the mercy and the blessings of the Almighty Allah. This is a promise from the Almighty Allah, who will love you and tell us who will hold us what they will have. It is He, Allah, that sent His messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with guidance. That is the Holy Quran. Wadil al haqi and the religion of truth. That is Islam. Li yuzhiru hu ala dinu kullihi. In order to make it prevail over all other so-called religions. Walau kariha al-mushrikun. Aw walau kariha al-kaitirun. Aw walau kariha al-munatikun. Even if the unbelievers and the munatikun do the ascribe partnership to, the, to Allah, like it or not, Allah says that Islam will continue to prevail. Now, the religion of Islam as presented to us from the first speaker is the religion of all the prophets of Allah. If you happen to ask any Christian, what was the religion practiced by Abraham alayhi salam? What was the religion practiced by Moses alayhi salam? What was the religion practiced by Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, all the prophets right from Adam alayhi salam? What was the religion practiced by Jesus alayhi salam? Only Islam that is holy Quran has an answer to give. The Muslims are best aware of the fact that all the prophets that came from the Almighty Allah are Muslims. And that is the reason why the Almighty Allah mentioned that in the deen, in the Nahil Islam, the only true religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. In Quran chapter 3, verse 85, Allah says that, وَمَنْ يَفْتَجِغَيْرِ إِسْلَامِ دِينَ that whosoever seeks for any religion that is not Islam, Allah will never accept that religion from him. It's a warning from the Almighty Allah. And on that indivisible day of judgment, on that day of accountability, on that day of mutual illusion and disillusion, such person that rejected the religion of Islam will be among the people that will lose salvation. Meaning, he will be among the losers because God has ordained and chosen the religion of Islam to be the religion of salvation and he rejected it. Allah also mentioned in the Holy Quran, chapter 2, verses 130 to 133, who turns away from the religion of Abraham from the guidance received by Abraham, except the one that befooled himself. Allah said that we have chosen Abraham in this world. And on the day of judgment, Abraham will be among the losers. Behold, this Lord Allah said unto Abraham, Aslim, submit yourself to Allah. And Abraham said that I have submitted myself to the Lord of the world. And Abraham enjoined this submission, this religion, upon his son, and also Jacob, saying, Oh my son, indeed, Allah has chosen this religion for you. Allah has authenticated this religion for you. Allah has appointed and commissioned this religion for you. Salat and his hospital bed and the birth of death is Allah Lebanese. When he gathered all his children and he said unto them, Mata Abu Duna Memba Adi. What will you serve and worship after I left the world? What will you serve and worship after I leave the world, after my death? Allah's children responded. Nabudu ilahaka, we will stop and worship your God. Wa ilaha aba ika Ibrahim, the God of your father Abraham, wa Ismail, Ishmael, wa Isaac, Isaac, ilaha wahidan, the only true God. 
Muslimun, and we will remain as Muslims in complete submission and obedience to the Almighty Allah. This indicates that the legacy that Abraham left upon his offspring, his descendants, was none other than the religion of Islam. That is the reason why in the Holy Quran chapter 3 verse 67, Allah says, Ma kana Ibrahimu Yahudiyan wala nasraniya. Abraham was not a Jew and Abraham was not a Christian. Wala king kana hanifa muslima. But Abraham was an upright man. He served and worshipped only one Allah. You know, wa ma kana minat. And a Muslim. And Abraham was not among the idolaters. He never sat or worshipped idols. So Abraham Salam, was a complete monotheist. He sat and worshipped only one Allah, and he worshipped God Almighty the way a manna the Muslims sat and worship God today. This has been confirmed even in the Bible. When you read the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 3, it is written that Abraham fell down on his face the way the Muslims do and he sat and worshipped the Almighty Allah then and Abraham prostrated on the ground with his face the way the Muslims do in order to show that he was a Muslim and he practiced the same religion as Muslims the same thing with who? the same thing with Moses and Aaron according to what the Bible says in the book of Exodus uh, in the book of Numbers chapter 20 but it's five to six. The Bible says that Moses, Aaron, and their sons fell down on their faces, meaning they prostrated with their faces to the ground and sat and worshiped the Almighty Allah. The same thing with Joshua. According to the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 14, Joshua went to the tent of the congregation and he fell down with his face on the ground and he sat and worshiped the Almighty Allah. The same thing with Daniel. According to the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10, he fell towards the direction of the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem, and he fell down on his face, and he sat and worshipped the Almighty Allah. The same thing with prophet Elijah. According to 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 39 to 42, Elijah worshipped the Almighty God with his face to the ground. The same thing with prophet David. According to the book of Psalm chapter 95, verse 6, David said, Oh, come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel with our faces to the ground before the Lord, our maker. The same thing with the angels of God, according to the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 13, the angels of God fell down on their faces to the ground and they sat and worship the Almighty Allah. The same thing with Ezra, the high priest, in accordance to what the Bible says, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 4 to 6, the Bible says that Ezra, the high priest, led a congregational prayer the way the Muslims do in the mosque. Ezra, the high priest, was the chief imam, and the other Muslims behind him, his own congregation, his own assembly, lie by his right hand and by his left hand. And Ezra delivered Hotuba, Jumu'ah Simon, Hotuba. After he delivered the Hotuba in the language that both the men and the women will be able to understand, meaning in the language of his own generation. After delivering the Hotuba, then it was time for prayer. And Ezra stood on a wooden pulpit, meaning he was in the front of death. And Ezra recited Surah Al-Fatiha, meaning he prayed and glorified the Almighty God. And they all answered, Amen, Amen. And Ezra lifted his hands to the level of his ears, and they did the same thing. And Ezra bowed down, meaning he performed Ruku, and the people also did the same thing. And Ezra went up from Ruku, and he went to the position of Sujud, prostration, with his face to the ground, and they also did the same thing. This is the demonstration of the Muslim system of prayer in the Bible. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4 to 6. If you open the Bible, you will get to see this prayer, Muslim congregational prayer. We did it in Obadadi. It was conducted by a Christian. I asked the Christian to read and demonstrate. You know, and instantaneously, 
after the demonstration, they embraced the religion of Islam. Allah. We got five of them that embraced the religion of Islam. Allah. That is the practical demonstration of the Muslim system of prayer in the Bible. And that was how the various prophets of the Almighty Allah sat and worshipped the Almighty God. Now, if you ask the Christians, how do you worship God? How did Jesus worship God? Did Jesus ever dance in the church? Did Jesus sing in the church? Did Jesus play music or drum in the church? How did Jesus worship God? The Bible mentioned in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39, that Jesus, the son of Mary, also fell down with his face to the ground, and he sat and worshiped the Almighty Allah. Jesus prostrated with his face to the ground, and you can hardly get a single Christian that says that he is a follower of Jesus doing this type of prayer that Jesus did in his own lifetime. Meaning, you can hardly see a Christian that will prostrate with his face to the ground to stop and worship the Almighty Allah every day and night, the way and manner the prophets of all and the Muslims of this generation do. That is the exact way, the exact manner of serving and worshiping the Almighty Allah. And that is exactly what the Almighty God himself mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 23. He said, by myself, I have sworn, the words have gone out of my mouth, and it shall never return. Unto me, every tongue shall swear. Unto me, every tongue shall swear, and unto me, every knee shall bow, all knees, please, uh, please, if you want to talk, uh, you get it, unto me, every tongue shall swear, and unto me, every knee shall bow, meaning all knees shall bow them before the Almighty God, and that is the reason why only God Almighty should be, should be served and worshipped, in accordance to what the Bible says, in the book of Ezra chapter 4, verses 2 to 5, God Almighty says, I am the Lord your God, that I have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no any other God except myself. Thou shalt have no any other God except myself. Thou shalt not make unto yourself any grievous image of the likeness of anything either in the heaven above, upon the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. This is a warning, and all the prophets of God that came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were aware of this warning from the Almighty God, that thou shalt have no any other God except me. Thou shalt not make unto yourself any grievous image of the likeness of anything either in the heaven above, upon the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor stop them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. This verse of the Bible shows that only God Almighty should be served and worshipped. And the same verse is there in the Holy Quran, where Allah said to Moses, Ya Musa, O Moses, inna ni and Allah, indeed I am Allah. Inna ni and Allah, indeed I am Allah. La ilaha illa ana. There is no any other God except myself. For I would need, therefore, serve and worship me. That is the corresponding part we write in the Christian Bible, in the book of Ezra, chapter 20, verses 2 to 5 where God Almighty spoke to the children of Israel through the mouth of Moses, that I am the Lord your God, that I have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no any other God except myself. You should not make unto yourself any grievous image of the likeness of anything, either in the heaven above, upon the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You should not bow down to them, nor stop them, because I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. That is the verse of the Bible which corresponded with that of the Holy Quran in Surah to Taha. Secondly, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was also told by the Almighty God through the Holy Spirit known as Angel Gabriel. 
ya mariam of the children of the king. Oh, Mary, be obedient to your Lord. What do you prostrate yourself on the ground to serve and worship the Almighty God? Allah. And bow down in prayer along with those who bow down in prayer. Listen, congregational prayer in the temple of Solomon. Because that was where Mary, the mother of Jesus, used to serve and worship the Almighty God. So she was asked to stand and bow down in prayer along with those that bow down in prayer. The same thing with Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. The angels of Allah called upon Zechariah when he was offering his prayer in the masjid, meaning in the chamber. He was praying in the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. This indicates that there is only one universal system of worship. That is what the Bible also says in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9. That it shall come to pass in the last day. I will change the language of the people into a pure language. I will change the language of the people into a pure language. That they will all call the name of the Lord in that language and worship Him shoulder to shoulder in the same language. Can any person tell me that universal language of worship? Arabic. Arabic. If you go to America, the Muslims worship God Almighty in Arabic. Go to Australia, the same thing. Go to Ghana, the same thing. Go to Britain, the same thing. Go to Canada, the same thing. Go to Germany, the same thing. Go to Iraq, the same thing. Go to Iran, the same thing. Go to Turkey, the same thing. Go to Saudi Arabia, the same thing. Go to Nigeria, the same thing. Go to any part of the world. The Muslims have the same universal system of worship. I will mention that in the last day, when I change the language of the people into a singing language, a clean language, an eloquent language, that they would all call the name of the Lord in that language and worship God shoulder to shoulder in the same language. The same thing. And we have the same system of prayer. Anywhere you go in the world, if you make your prayer, you know how to follow your Imam. Anywhere you are in the world, we have the same system. Therefore, this makes Islam to be what? A universal religion of the Almighty God. Now I ask the question. Where? In the Bible, are the Christians commanded to go to church on Sunday? I have been asking this question for over 30 years in the presence of different Christian denominations to indicate a single book in any of the versions of the Bible, whether the King James Version, the Revised Standard Version, the Good News Bible, the Living Bible, the International Bible, the New American Bible, the Capocrucian Bible, the Lord Book of the Bible, and the Bible. The New English Bible, the Everyday Bible, the Jerusalem Bible, this Bible, that Bible, to indicate to me where in the Bible are they commanded to go to church on Sunday. And I promise in the presence of the Christians that if any Christian could be able to pinpoint a single verse in the Bible where the Christians are commanded to go to church on Sunday, I am ready to become a Christian. I am ready to become a Christian. If any Christian can be able to pinpoint a single part in the Bible where they are commanded to go to church on Sunday, I am ready to become a Christian. <laughs> when I do this question in Canada, at the Minnesota Cultural Center Board, in Canada, at the Minnesota Cultural Center Board, it was a Christian bishop, a lecturer at the University of Calabar, that was able to come and face the challenge. He just came out. He said, I am ready to face your challenge. I said, okay, take the mic. Take the mic. And he started perusing through his Bible, copiously, perusing through the Bible, spending some time to the extent that other people were so tired he could not be able to confirm a single part. He said, I don't know whether he's there for Old Testament or he's there for New Testament. I said, Why that? <laughs> he could not pinpoint. And do you know what he said later? He said, Okay, I accept your challenge, but I want to ask you the same question. You Muslims, you used to go to mosque on Friday, is that not? I say, Yes. 
with automatic and accurate. <laughs> I say yes. He said, can you pinpoint any part in your Quran where you Muslims are told to go to work on Friday? I say yes. Surah Al-Jama'ah. Surah Al-Jama'ah. Allah says, Ya Ayyuhallazina Amanu, O Yuhu Benin. Iza Nudiya Nisalata Min Yawm Al-Jama'ah. Whenever a call is made on Friday for the observance of Friday service, first out in Azikir Allah, ask him to the remembrance of Allah. Allah! And the man became dumbfounded and speechless. He said, Oh God, thank you. I say you to thank you. Allah. The second challenge, the word Christianity, the word of the name. If you ask me, what is my religion? I say my religion is Islam. Do you have Islam in the Quran? Yes. Is there any part in the Quran where you are asked to accept Islam as your religion? Yes. Madam has quoted the various chapters, like Quran chapter 3 verse 18, in the deal, in the life of Islam, your religion in the sight of Allah is Islam, like Quran chapter 3 verse 85, for many of the people Islam, the Dina, whoever seeks a religion that is not Islam, for many of the people who Allah will never accept it from him, for more of the accuracy than Qatarin, and on that end, the beautiful day of judgment, he will be among the Luda, like the Quran chapter 5 verse 3, where Allah says, Aliyum akumatu lakum dinakum, wa akumatu alaykum niyama tibu, to the people of Islam, Adina, the day that I have perfected your religion for you and I have completed my favor upon you and I have chosen Islam to be your religion and your way of life and so many other verses in the Holy Quran where Islam is mentioned as the religion of God. I am now throwing this challenge. If there is any Christian evangelist that can be able to confirm where the word Christianity C H R I S T I A N I T Y. I am ready to become a Christian. The son of Mary was a prophet of God. He quoted the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. He quoted the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 46. He quoted the book of John chapter 9, verse 17. He quoted the book of Mark chapter 6, verse 4. He quoted the book of John chapter 6, verse 14. He quoted the book of Luke chapter 24. He quoted the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 32 to 33. He quoted the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 16. He also quoted the Holy Quran, chapter 19, verse 30 to 33, where Jesus said, And in the day of the lie, as I hear the time of the Anna Nina Bia. Meaning, I am indeed the servant of Allah. Allah has given me the book, and Allah has made me to be his prophet. So Jesus is undoubtedly a prophet of God, according to the Bible, and also according to the Quran. The Bible and the Quran also address Jesus as servant of God. Acts chapter 3 verse 13, Acts chapter 3 verse 26, Acts chapter 4 verse 27, Acts chapter 4 verse 30 of the Revised Standard Version, New English Bible, Jehovah Witness Bible, International Version of the Bible, New American Bible, and also New King James Version of the Bible. Jesus is addressed as a servant of the Almighty God directly, and he is called a servant of God in Matthew chapter 12, verse 18, and also in John chapter 13, verse 16, Jesus said the servant is not greater than his master, no he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Therefore, Jesus is addressed as a servant of God, and the Quran says, Layas Sekhi Fan Masih Hu Ayyakula Abdelillah, that Jesus, the son of Mary, is certain not to be a servant of God. He felt not arrogant to be addressed as a servant of the Almighty God. Therefore, Quranically and biblically, rationally and scripturally, Jesus is a prophet and a servant of God. And that is what the Muslims believe him to be. Thirdly, <laughs> Jesus Christ, according to the Quran and the Bible, was sent as a prophet and a messenger from God only to the Jews, according to the Bible and the Quran. Not according to my own opinion, but according to the Bible, let us allow the Bible and the Quran to speak. We all read English right from our Nazi school, our primary school, our secondary schools. Listen to this simple statement of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 24. Jesus said, and I quote, I was sent only to 
with the lordship of the house of Israel. Jesus said, I was sent only to the lordship of the house of Israel. Just for example, if I say, I was sent only to Lagos. Am I sent to Kalu? Am I sent to Kaduna? Or am I sent to Anambra? No, I was sent only to Kalu. Now, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, I was sent only to the lordship of the house of Israel. Who are the lordship of the house of Israel? The Jews. The Jews. That was the clear statement of Jesus of the restriction or limitation of his message. He said he was sent only to the Jews, the Jewish community. Then in Matthew chapter 10, but in fact this is, the Bible says Jesus had 12 disciples. And when he was sending his 12 disciples to go and preach, he gave them instruction according to the Bible. And I quote, Jesus said, as you are going, go not unto the way of the Gentiles, do you know the meaning of Gentiles? The non-Jewish people. Those that are not Jews. Jesus asked his disciples, he gave them the instruction, go not unto the way of the Gentiles, nor unto any house of the Samaritans. Don't go to the people of Samaria, because I was not sent to them. But go only to the lordship of the house of Israel. Go only to the lordship of the house of Israel. This indicates that the message of Jesus was mainly for the Jews. The same thing the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 6. About the restriction of the message of Jesus. And I quote, Thou Bethlehem of Judea art not the least. For out of you shall come a ruler. Out of you shall come a ruler. A prophet, a messenger, a governor. And he shall govern by people, Israel. And that ruler, you know, is mentioned to be Jesus in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6 of the Bible. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, about the birth of Jesus, the angel told Mary, you are with a child, and you will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Who were his people? The Jews. So, According to the Bible and the Quran, Jesus was sent only to the Jews. Allah said in the Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 49, Wa Rasulan ila bani Israel. Jesus was sent as a messenger to the children of Israel, just as the Bible says. There is no dispute between the Bible and the Quran. Jesus is a messenger of Allah. What is the meaning of a messenger? Please, who can tell me the meaning of a messenger? Eh? It's someone that is sent. Thank you very much. Someone that is sent. Now, Jesus is called a messenger of God. Does the Bible agree with what the Quran says? Yes. First, Allah says in Quran chapter 5, verse 75. Indeed, Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, is only a messenger from Allah, is only a prophet from Allah. And the Prophet said, Come to Jerusalem, there were other messengers and prophets that have passed away before him. Now, does the Bible agree with the Quran that Jesus was a messenger of God? Yes. In the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me, he has appointed me to preach the gospel and send me to preach the gospel. You know, to preach the gospel to the people, his own people, did it? He was sent by the Almighty God as a messenger. The same thing in the book of John, chapter 12, verse 49. John, chapter 12, verse 49. This is what Jesus said. I have not spoken on my own authority, but the God who sent me, Give me the commandment of what I should say and what I should speak unto you. The God who sent me, meaning Jesus was a messenger of God. The same thing in the book of John chapter 4 verse 34. Jesus said, my food, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his job. Meaning the work of him who sent me. The same thing in the book of John chapter 7 verse 16. Jesus said, my teachings are not mine. But they belong to him who sent me. The same thing in the book of John chapter 3 verse 38. Jesus said, I came down on earth in order to do the will of him 
that sent me, meaning he was sent by the Almighty God. The same thing in the book of Joshua, chapter 17, verse 3. Jesus said, This is life eternal, that they should know you as the only true God and to believe in Jesus, whom thou hast sent. So the Bible and the Quran agree that Jesus was sent. And the Bible and the Quran agree that Jesus was a prophet of God and a servant of God. And the Bible and the Quran agree that Jesus was sent to the Jews. Now, a Christian asks a question that if Jesus was sent only to the Jews, what about us? Are we not the people of God? Is God not our creator? Did God not send a messenger unto us? Who was that messenger that was sent to us? That is the question that they begin to ask. If they understood that Jesus was sent only to the Jews, the next question is, what about we? Who then was sent to us? That is the question we are going to answer now. Now, the Quran answered the question. In Quran chapter 61, verse 10, what is Allah is the Maryama? Remember when Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Yahweh is Israel. Oh, you are the children of Israel. In me, Rasulullah, I am the messenger of Allah to you. Musadik al Namabai, I come in order to confirm that which was before me of the Torah, to confirm the law of Moses, to confirm the teaching of Moses. You know, and that is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. He said, Think not that I have come in order to destroy the law of Moses and the teaching of the prophet. I didn't come. For verily, verily, I say unto you, till the heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one city shall in no wise pass away from the law, till all be fulfilled. Then he said, And I am giving you the good news of a messenger, a prophet, that will come after me, and his name is Ahmad. Meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So according to the Quran, Jesus spoke about the prophet of Muhammad. He spoke about the advent of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He spoke about the august appearance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the only challenge we are now left with is to indicate where Jesus made that statement in the Bible. Where in the Bible did Jesus talk about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I will give you some references in the Bible. First, before giving the references, as the Christian, did Jesus ever mention about the coming of anyone after he left the world? Did Jesus, according to the teachings of the Bible, ever prophesy or mention about the coming of another being after he left the world? The learned Christian will tell you yes. But the unlearned or ignorant is among the Christians will say, no, we don't know. We don't know. The Bible, and others will say, no. According to the Bible, before Jesus left the world, he mentioned in various places about the coming of a prophet after him. One reference is in the book of John. Chapter 16, verses 12 to 14. The book of John, it is compulsory or important for every Muslim to memorize this verse because this verse belongs to the Muslims. It mentions about the advent of Prophet Muhammad. John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14 of any Bible. And I quote Jesus. Jesus said, and I quote, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he shall hear, that is what he will speak. For he will receive of mine, and he will show them unto you, and he will glorify me, and he will show you the judgment to come. Allah. These are the prophets, the descriptive terminology used by Jesus about eight masculine genders, used by Jesus to indicate the coming of 
another person, he used third person singular. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you. Who were the you? The Jews. You, he was speaking to them. But you cannot be at them now. However, when he third person, if you open your dictionary and look at the meaning of the pronoun, he, it gives the meaning as a male person. A male person. When he, the spirit of truth, meaning a man of God, a spiritual man of God, a spiritual man of God, he will tell you something about God. That is why he is addressed by Jesus as the spirit of truth. Jesus said, when he comes, because at that time he had not come, when Jesus was in the world. Then Jesus said, he will guide you into all the truth, because he will not speak on his own authority, that whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he would speak, and he will receive some information about me, and he will pass this information to you, and he will glorify me, and he will show you the judgment of God. We have the men of Jesus. Who was this person? Who was this he, 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 that will come and guide the world into all the truth? The Christian, without missing word, they say the Holy Spirit. <laughs> They say the Holy Spirit. We say we believe in the existence of the Holy Spirit. But in the lifetime of Jesus Christ, was the Holy Spirit not in the world? Of course, the Holy Spirit was in the world. According to Jesus, in John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus preached to his disciples and he says, Receive the Holy Spirit. Meaning the Holy Spirit was there with Jesus, ministering unto Jesus. The same thing in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 15 to 17, and Luke chapter 3, verse 22, when Jesus was taking his baptism, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove, meaning the Holy Spirit has been ministering unto Jesus. The same thing in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, Jesus said, I cast out devils with the Spirit of God, and the kingdom of God is come unto you. The same thing in the Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 87, Allah says, we get Jesus the son of Mary, clear sign, potent, miracles, and we supported him with the Holy Spirit. This indicates that the Holy Spirit had been with Jesus. But the person that Jesus was talking about, he said, when he come, because at that time he had not come, it is better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. Meaning, the coming of that comforter depends on the physical departure of Jesus from this world. You know? And Jesus further says in John chapter 15, verse 26, and John chapter 14, verse 26 also, Jesus said that when he comes, he will bring to your remembrance all that I have said unto you. He will remind you all that I have said unto you when he comes. Then Jesus said, he will not speak on his own authority. That whatsoever he shall hear, that is what he will speak. Compare this with what Allah says in the Holy Quran about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in chapter 53, verses 2 to 3 of the Quran. Muhammad does not speak on his own authority. It is only an inspiration that was sent to him from Allah. Allah and he was taught by one mighty in power. So he was not speaking on his own authority. Then Jesus said, he will tell you many things about me. Do we have the account of Jesus and the Quran of God? We have the account of Jesus and the Quran. We have a chapter, chapter 19 of the Quran that is named after the name of the mother of Jesus. There in that chapter 19 of the Holy Quran, you will read about the immaculate and miraculous birth and conception of Jesus. How Jesus was miraculously delivered by the Virgin Mary, the conversation that took place between the Holy Spirit on one side, known as Angel Gabriel, and the Virgin Mary, when the angel appears unto her, you know, to announce unto her the gift of having a holy son. You know, Allah says, Maryam, 
relate in the book, the account of Mary is in Jerusalem in Ahadiha Makan and Sharkia. When she withdrew from her family to a place in the east, you know, for Chakazan bin Duni in Java, she used a screen to screen herself from them. For Arsala Eleha Rohana, we said unto her, our spirit, our angel, but our son of Ahab Shal and Shahuya, and he appeared unto her as a man in all respect. When she saw the man, Allah Mary said, if you do fear God, come not near me. Then the angel told her, Allah in Nama and Rasulah Rabbit the Ahabalaki Bulama Zakiya. Indeed, I am only a messenger from your Lord. The purpose of my coming is to bestow unto you the gift of a holy son. Mary asked. How can I be able to give back to yourself? When no one has touched me, when I'm not a and I'm not a harlot, I'm not a prostitute. Then the angel told Mary, that even though Dios said that it is easy for me, you know, when an Allah who I tell the Nazi, and we wish to appoint him as a sign unto men, and a mercy from all. Wakana Amalam Makadiya, it is a matter decreed and ordained by the Almighty Allah. You know, for Hamalatu, and Mary became pregnant. From Tabazat Bihi Wakana Gaziya, and she went with that pregnancy to a remote place, a distant place. Allah for Aja, Ahal Makaru, Elijah, and Nakalas, the pain of childbearing brought Mary to the throne of a palm tree. Allah for Yale Kanishi, cried in her anguish. Yahweh can be woe unto me. Made to come to Hala. And if I die before this incident happened unto me, for God to not say I'm here, and become something forgotten and out of sight. For now that I have meant to have her, and Mary had a voice from Ben's heart, and Allah to have been saying, Grip not, and Ja'ala has put it to have a Sariya, for your Lord has provided a regular running water under you. You know, what for thee in Lake he just in Nakala. Shed towards yourself the trunk of the palm tree. The Sakita Alayko Mutuba Jaliya, it will let fall dry food upon you. Fakuli, what shall I be? Eat, what shall I be? And drink from that water. What are you, Aina? And comfort your eye for the birth of the child, the father of the child. If you come across any other person and such a person ask you as to where you get that child. Fakuli in me. Say that I have found myself to find before the most gracious Allah. For none who can do my yoga and see her, and that today I will not speak to any other human being. Then what happened? Mary gave birth to Jesus. And she took Jesus on her shoulder. And she started walking majestically, majestically, majestically towards her house. But she had to pass through the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. You know, as she was going. The Jewish authorities stopped her because they knew Mary. They knew her father, known as Ibrahim. They knew her mother, known as Hannah. They knew her brothers and sisters and all her relations, including Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist, that took care of Mary when she was in the temple. They knew all of them. They knew that Mary was not married to any other human being. But they saw Mary parading with a fatherless child on her shoulder. Naturally, they have to question her. And they stop me at the temple of Solomon. She brought the child, carrying him on her shoulder. Alleluia, Maria. Then the Jews asked, Ya Maria, Mary. They questioned her in their court of law. Mary. Your father, as we know your father, your father was not a wicked man. Your father was not a woman either. For my father, and your mother was not, you know, a wicked woman. She was not a harlot. Where do you get this begin? Where do you get this child? Who make you pregnant? Mary, they were questioning Mary. Because they were not there when the Holy Spirit appeared unto her. When the angel of God appeared unto her. So naturally, they question her. And Mary was speechless. She could not talk to them because she was asked not to tell, not to speak with anybody. They said, Mary, we are asking you as to where you get this particular child. Where do you get the child? She was fortunate for Asharat Elaine. But because of the supernatural of 
unprecedented event that took place in her presence, in the presence of the Holy Spirit known as Angel Gabriel. She referred them to the child. Then yeah. she pointed to the child that they should ask the child. Then the Jews said, Maryam, how do you expect us to speak with a child? A newly born baby. We are asking you as to where you get the child and you are asking us to ask the child. Before they close their mouth, God Almighty commanded Jesus as a child on the very day he was born to act as a lawyer in defense of his mother. And Jesus, the newly born baby, started speaking to them. The old men of the Jewish authority. Kala in the Abdullah, in the disciple of Allah. Daniel Kitab, Allah has given me the book. Was the Alani in Nabiya, Allah has sent me to be his prophet. Was the Alani Mubarak and Aina Makun, Allah has sent me to bless me as to ever I may be. Was the Alani with Salat was the Katima of the Haya. Allah has enjoyed on me prayer and charity as long as I live. Was Barra Biwali Rati. Allah has sent me to be kind to my mother, to be respectful to my mother, to be obedient to my mother, not to be aggressive to my mother. The peace of Allah is on me. The day that I was born, the day that I shall die, and on the final day of judgment when Allah will bring me back to life. That was the first miracle that Jesus did on earth, according to the Holy Quran. That on the very day Jesus Christ was born, he started speaking to the people. A Christian say, oh God, I want to ask a question. I say, ask you a question. In the front of my lecture, after hearing this part, he said that the Bible and the Quran, which one confess? I say your Bible confess before the Quran. He said that this miracle is not in our Bible. I say yes, it's not in your Bible. I say that according to your Bible, what was the first miracle that Jesus did on earth? He said the first miracle that Jesus did on earth was to change water to wine. I say how old was he when he changed water to wine? He said he did not know. I say you don't know, he say yes. I say he was 30 years old. <laughs> Minister. He said, eh, I say, you can't provide He said, we are, I said, the book of John chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, at the beginning of his ministry. But this miracle of Jesus in the Quran happened on the very day Jesus Christ was born. He did not even spend, it's not even up, he did not even spend one hour when he was born and he started speaking. He said, but why does the Bible not mention this? I said, because your Bible is not complete. Do you have any evidence to show me that my Bible is not complete? I say yes. He said, where? I said, the book of John, chapter 20, verse 30. The Bible says, Jesus did many other miracles, signs, and wonders in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. Jesus did many other miracles, signs, and wonders in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. In minutes, there are so many unrecorded miracles of Jesus in the Bible. There are still other miracles mentioned in the Quran about Jesus that are not recorded in the Bible. Like the miracle of the table of food in Surah al Ma'idah, chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, verse 1211 to 113. The miracle of food descending from heaven is not in the Bible. Like the miracle of telling people what they ate and saw in their houses as mentioned by the fourth speaker in Quran chapter 3 verse 49 is not recorded in the Christian Bible. You get it? Therefore, the first miracle that Jesus did on earth according to the Quran was to speak to the people the very day he was born. And we shall remember the verse that I quoted about the prophecy made by Jesus on the coming of Prophet Muhammad said that Allah in the book of Joshua that the thing but the Lord will be. Jesus said, when he comes, he will tell you many things about me. Such is Jesus, the son of Mary. I want to have a lady fee here on Taru, a statement of truth about which they are in doubt. Makana the lie, and yet I kill a new one another. It does not befit the majesty of Allah that he should become a son. Isaiah, 
The Prophet Muhammad knew how to read and write before the Quran was revealed to him. No, no. That is why the Bible says the, the book is revealed unto him. Who cannot read? And he was commanded to read. And he said, I am not learning. Then you go back to the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. The vision of John. Revelation is the last book of the Bible. The last book of the Bible is Revelation. It unveils the things that will take place in the future. And this book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 6 to 7, mentioned about the coming of a powerful book. And let me put it. The vision of John, and he said, and I saw an angel hovering in the sky, hovering, meaning flying in the sky with an everlasting book. The Bible called it an everlasting book, an eternal message, an everlasting gospel, an everlasting scripture that will be preached to the people that dwell on earth, to every nation, to every tribe, to every community, to every tongue, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory, glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is coming. And worship him that created the heaven, the earth, the mountains, and the oceans of water. Now, in this vision of John, he saw an angel of God, which is the last book of the Bible. Revelation is the last book of the Bible. You know? So he said, he saw an angel of God holding an everlasting book. A book that will remain forever and ever. And this book will be preached to all the people that dwell on earth. To every nation, to every tribe, to every community, to every tongue. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has, is coming. And worship him that created the heaven, the earth, the mountain, and the springs of water. Please, after the gospel of Jesus, what other scripture was revealed? The Holy Quran. And the Bible called it an eternal message. And it will be preached to every community, to every tribe, to every nation, according to the Bible. And the gospel of Jesus is not a coincidence. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, Jesus said, My teaching, my gospel is only meant for my people, the Jews. I was sent only to the lordship of the house of Israel. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, when he was sending his 12 disciples to go and preach his gospel, he said, Go not unto the way of the Gentiles, nor unto any house of the Samaritans, but go only to the lordship of the house of Israel. The gospel of Jesus was meant only for the Jews. But this everlasting gospel mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 27, was meant for the whole world. And lastly, in references to the statement made by Jesus, in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, when Jesus was mentioning about the signs of the hour, the signs of the hour, because he was asked in Matthew chapter 24 verse 36, when shall the world end? And Matthew chapter 13 verse 32, he said he did not know, but he can mention the signs. And he started mentioning the signs of the hour. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famine, there will be the different kind of diseases will spread on the world. And lastly, he made an important prophecy. And this is what he said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 of the Bible. Jesus said, And the everlasting kingdom, the everlasting gospel of the kingdom, will be preached to the people of the world as a witness to all the nations before the end of the world. Let me put it. Let me put it. Jesus said, And the everlasting gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the people that dwell on earth as a witness to all the nations before the end of the world. As a sign of the hour. Meaning, before the end of the world, Jesus said there will be a universal scripture that will unite the people of the world in the worship of the Almighty God that will touch about a universal religion of God, where God Almighty is sung and worship, and with the same accord, Jesus said, the everlasting gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the people that dwell on earth as a witness to all the nations 
before the end of the world will come. Now, what is the last book that the Almighty Allah said? The Holy Quran is the last testament. We have the Old Testament, we have the New Testament, and we have what? The last testament. The Bible called the Quran the last testament. Do you know where the, the Bible called the Quran the last testament? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 to 10, and I put the empty is there. He said, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect come, the incomplete one will be kept aside. When that which is complete come, the incomplete one will be kept aside. What is that complete one? That is the Holy Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbirullah. Inshallah, it's been a wonderful session. May Allah increase your knowledge. May Allah prolong his life. May Almighty Allah make his feet firm on the path of good. That's the best prayer we can give to him, or we can offer for him. And we, the listeners, the audience, we pray Almighty Allah reward us abundantly for listening patiently and making up our minds to continue to be Muslims. Like I was said earlier, the essence of this session, this lecture, as it were, this enlightenment is to increase us in knowledge and to also give us reasons why we need to believe, why we should have the conviction that we are on the right path. Sheikh, the Almighty Allah increase in knowledge. Madam, the Almighty Allah increase in knowledge. And each and every one of us, it's a duty upon us. He's quoting the Bible, he's quoting the Quran effortlessly, and he's interpreting, doing the tafsir for each and every one of us to understand. Um, like it's always said, Searching for knowledge is not just the responsibility of the scholars as it were, but it's incumbent upon all of us to always find time to do it. Because our essence of being in this world is to worship Allah. Um, we have somebody here who has um, a question or a comment to give or a question to ask. Um, we'll grant the audience to ask that question. And we'll call on our, our chef to do justice to the question. Please just straight to the point because we are time constrained now. Just straight to the point and we'll do justice to it. I just want to ask a question. I'm seeing a movement in my life. I'm not saying a movement like you in my life. Although my mother is a movement and my father is a Christian. My name is Ali. Still here, seeing you preaching. I'm 27 years old. I was in Kaduna. I was not in Kaduna that when these uh, fights of Muslim fights before with Christians, that was then. But I do know since then, God made I didn't go to church. I'm a Catholic for me, but I know. I didn't go to church, I didn't go to mosque. But when you to even church, I know how to pray in mosque, do Allah, Allah, because my mother is a Muslim, my father is a Muslim. I know everything about them, but I didn't care about that. I'm coming from where I'm preaching. I just went to go and take like five bottles. I'm just coming to see you that you are preaching about Christian and Muslim. I was very surprised. But since then, I'm 50 years old, I did not go to church or move, but I believe that it's God. I believe in God. But what you're saying now that is, either I will be going to mosque or I'll be going to church for what you say today. Because since of my life, I used to say that I don't need that preach, I didn't care about that, but I believe that it's God, I do move in my own. But what you say now, this time in my life, in my life, I would ever start going to God, ever go to church or box, as from today. It's a very big surprise for me in my life. I'm a small boy, but I promise you, sir. As soon as I have a billion, or a hundred billion, I'll give you 99. I'll say thank you. It's a big surprise for me. Because when I was in Kaduna, 
I do believe that with some, I'm sorry to say that, uh, some Muslim, and some Muslim call Christian a Capri, but that Capri, for me, uh, I do hear yeah, also very well, but that Capri means that somebody that does not know God, but for me, I know that because I did it, but I believe that it's God. Some people went to go and pray to mosques or church, but they didn't know what they were going to do there. I didn't go to church, I didn't go to mosques, but I believe that it's God. That is for me. But the surprise is that. The very big surprise for me going to Bible, preaching about, I don't know. It's only God that can involve it. As soon as I have much money again, I'm still sending me, or I have a car. I have all this estate, I will touch you. Since you are taking two options, he said he promised to check. You either become a Muslim or a Christian. I had an experience of this nature. I was delivering a talk at a federal university of the United United States. So a student came out during the question and answer session like this. He told me that his father is a Muslim, but his mother is a Christian. So he goes to church and he goes to mosque. He has no problem. According to him, because he goes to church and he goes to mosque. So he has no problem. I said, you have the, the greatest problem, really. But at the end of the day, I ask him a question I want to ask him. If you go to church, what do you do in the church? What do you do? What normally happens in the church? For me, just only time. For what does people do in the church when they go to church? I don't care about that. Just tight. Ah, okay, tight. Beside tight, they have the dance. Go with the they sing. They sing. They sing. They dance. They clap. They feed drums in the church. But love her, come on. Christianity is said to be a religion that follows the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ. They emulate this is all their, their deeds. So no way in the Bible that ask him a question. Whether he can come out and sing the people the song that was sung by Jesus in his lifetime. He could not sing a single song because Jesus did not sing a song in church. I ask you a second question, can you dance the way Jesus danced his life like show or the most dead dancing of Jesus? Jesus did not dance in the Bible, right? But this is the the Bible. How does the Muslim pray in the mosque? You have witnessed what happens in the church, and you must have also witnessed what happened in the mosque. And this is Bible. Look at it. Call it Bible, King James Version. Very good. So we want someone to come and demonstrate prayers in the Bible and compare it with what the Muslims are doing in the mosque. Then you take your final answer, whether it's Islam or Christianity, you are all passing judgment for yourself. Who can read the Bible for us? Can anybody volunteer to come and read the Bible? Yes. So you want to read it? Very good. Now this is the Bible. Check. This is King James Version of this page. The first page. Holy Bible, have you seen it? Holy Bible. This is the book of Nehemiah. This is chapter 8. He's going to start reading the Bible from verse 4. And we want people to volunteer here and demonstrate, act upon the reading of the Bible. And since really we want you to come out and act according to what he's reading. Then we want, is it Ali, your name? Ali or Shekun. Ali or Shekun. No, you want Shekun to see what the Muslims are doing in the mosque, but according to his own Bible. Then you pass judgment for yourself. We don't want you to live here without taking a decision, whether a Muslim or a Christian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now we need Ezra to come out here. Someone should come out and volunteer as Ezra. Right, two on a wooden pulpit. You know pulpit? When you go to any Jumad mosque, you see the stage that the Imam used to climb in order to deliver sermon. It's called a pulpit. And Ezra stood on a wooden pulpit. What happened? Which they have made for the purpose. Which they have made for the purpose. That wooden pulpit is only made for salmon. After the salmon, the imam comes down. So it is only made for that purpose. Wow. And beside him stood... Beside Ezra stood... Um, Matthias. Matthias, come and stand before Ezra. Beside Ezra. Yes. Shema. Shema, come and stand beside him. Anaya. Anaya, come down. Uriah. Uriah. Ukaiah. Masaya. Masaya, come up. Come up. 
his right hand. So they are all on his right hand. And then what are these? And Bidaya. And Bidaya on his left. Bidaya. Mishael. Mishael. Just come stand up, join him. Malikija. Malikija. Malikashu. Malikashu, come and join him. And like that, like that. And that up to Hasbadana. Yes. Okay. And Ezra opened the book in now, the sight of all Ezra the people. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. Are you following the Bible? We are reading from the Bible. For he was above all the people. For he was above all the people. He was at the front of all the people. As he was down by Wait, is that what happened in the mosque? Have you ever observed this? Like this? See, Ali. Yeah, but is that what happened in the mosque? The Imam pulled us to the mosque. People are lying behind him. Now what happened? And when he opened it, all the people stood. And when Ezra opened the book, all the people stood up. See them standing uh, beside uh, Ezra. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And Ezra blessed the Lord. Inside us, Fatiha. You decide to till the end. And after reaching, they will be one of God. And all the people answered, Amen. And all the people answered, Amen. 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 إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المكتوب عليهم ولا الضالين. The great God. The great God. And all the people answered. All the people answered. Amen. 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 Just as we heard them say, Amen. After blessing them out. Lift them up their hands. Now lift them up. Watch them. Lift them up their hands. Wow. And they bowed their heads. And, and they bowed their heads. The and they bowed their heads. Who? Cool. They bowed their heads. With their faces to the ground. I wish you Lord to be our missing God. I love my God. Which respect to the prophecy made by Jesus in the book of John, 
of class 16, class 12 to 14, where Jesus talked about the coming of a false altar after him. Where he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of Christ comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he will speak. He will receive of mine, and he will show them unto you, and he will glorify me, and show you the judgment to come. Now he gets the reason that the Christian used to quote about the incident of the Pentecostal period. That incident of the Pentecostal period is mentioned in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the Holy Spirit descended on some of the disciples of Jesus and they started speaking in different languages. This was not the prophecy made by Jesus. It was the prophecy made by Prophet Joel in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. And this had been confirmed by Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus, in the book of Acts of, of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 15, verse 15. That it was the third hour of the day which was mentioned by Prophet Joel. So the incident of the Pentecostal period has nothing to do with the prophecy made by Jesus. Jesus talked about the coming of a human being, a human prophet that will guide the people into all the truth. He will tell many people about him. He will tell the people many things about him. He will honor him and glorify him. And this prophecy was made, was fulfilled with the advent of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the, the incident of the Pentecostal period was a different prophecy entirely made by Prophet Joy where he said, your old men shall see vision, your young men shall bring truth. It has nothing to do with the prophecy made by Jesus. With um, different people from different faiths, they are psychological. Please, if you need any to broaden your knowledge, please, uh, please kindly see those selling them, the vendors selling them, and buy one for yourself. Don't make a black guy us. All right. Let's um,
New Testament has given different the development of the biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon which the King James Version was based make it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as the call for the revision of the English translation. So the unfortunate situation the Bible found itself is that the original language of Revelation is not written just as we have the Quran in the original language, which is Arabic, and the Muslims wrote the Quran all over the world in the language. But the Christians in their churches, they only read the Bible in Hausa and English, or in Hebrew language, or in Yoruba language. But where is the language of the Bible? You can hardly get a single pastor or bishop or reverend father or born again or die again Christian or God's prayer than can be ever. And at the national and international level, the Muslims all over the world, you know, are used to gather themselves in different nations of the world to have an international Quranic competition in the language of the Quran, which is what? Arabic. You get it? The Muslims all over the world, they will gather, you know, in Saudi Arabia in order to have an international competition, recitation of the glorious Quran. Is it possible for the Christians to have an international competition of the Bible? Do you know the reason? Because they have different versions of the Bible. The Gunnus Bible, the Living Bible, the International Bible, the New American Bible, the Catholic Bible, the Jehovah Witness Bible, the Amplified Bible, the Jerusalem Bible, the Everyday Bible. Contradictory versions of the Bible. And the Catholic Jewish version of the Bible contains how many books? 73 books. And the Protestant version of the Bible contains 66 books. On the 8th of September 1957, the headquarters of the Jehovah Witnesses at the United States of America published a magazine titled 50,000 Errors in the Bible. <laughs> that they have discovered 15,000 errors in the Bible. John Balashaw, in his book entitled Hero and Hero Worship, he said, the most dangerous book on earth is the Bible. Keep it under lock and key. <laughs> God is not the author of confusion. Therefore, in the Bible, you can find the word of God in the Bible, you can find the word of the prophet of God in the Bible, and you can find the word of the historian in the Bible, and you can find some addition and deletion in the Bible. And Alhamdulillah, uh, Dr. Maurice Bouquet, who was a Christian, a French Roman Catholic scientist, wrote a book, a voluminous book of about 2,000 pages. And that book is entitled The Bible, the Quran, and Modern Science. Before they summarize the book, The Bible, the Quran, and Modern Science. And he experimented scientifically the Bible and the Quran, the authenticity of the Quran to that of the Bible. He compared and contrasted the Bible and the Quran from the scientific point of view. And this is his conclusion. He was not a Muslim. He made this experiment about 200 years back, a French Roman Catholic scientist. And he mentioned in page 120 of his book, he said, and I quote, why monumental errors are to be found in the Bible, I cannot find a single error in the Quran. Why monumental errors are to be found in the Bible, I cannot find a single error in the Quran. I have to stop and ask myself that if Muhammad was the author of the Quran, how would he have written for which today are shown to be Jews with more than 77 discovered? And Professor Nolde in the Encyclopedia Britannica, 9th edition, on the Quran. He said the effort of the Western imperialists to find a letter interpolation in the Quran has failed. They have not succeeded in discovering an atom weight of error, permission or addition or distortion in the Quran. Why? Because of the divine protection that the author of the book is said, Allah has for the book. The Quran has its internal and external security. I quite believe one day, and I give advice to the management of this respected mosque. One day you should have the opportunity to invite Mana Usman Shehu in order to speak about the miracles of the Quran. You will discover a lot of things about the Holy Quran. A lot of things, the miracle of the Quran, the internal and the external security, the mathematical protection.
shop, they buy a protest shop. You know, they go by the Almighty Allah about the Holy Quran.